I'm a pirate. Oh, he did not like that statement. Garp really wants him to be a marine kid, despite Luffy absolutely not wanting to be a marine kid. Your training begins today. I feel like things might have worked out better if he just let him be a civilian, but maybe he wanted him to become a marine because he wanted to be a pirate. What's up? Fire back at them! Or how about we sail away as fast as we can? <laughs> Good idea, Usopp. Just run away. Even Navi's like, yeah, how about we don't? You know how to load a cannon, right? Yeah, of course. I loaded thousands of them. Usopp not knowing how to shoot a cannonball is going to put the whole team in jeopardy, right? Like, man, that is just embarrassing. But also, he's a he's a liability. He's going to get them all killed. What did Luffy say? He's up on the bow. He hasn't said anything since we hightailed it. Somebody needs to talk to him. This is a very interesting version of Luffy. Hey, how you doing? Great. Like here, Luffy is asked to address an important concern that the crew has, and he avoids eye contact, his head is down, he is shutting down the entire conversation because he's deflecting. About the battle, you want to talk about it? Nope. Okay, good talk. Oh, the Baratier. That looks gorgeous. I feel like they really thought about the logistics of how this fish boat would actually work. Because, man, in the original, I always wondered, where are all the ships? Where do they park when they're landing at the Baratier? Here they know! There's, like, a whole infrastructure around this place. Do you have a reservation, sir? Do we need one? And this feels more like a proper establishment, right? Like, this isn't a spot for random pirates to just cruise in and get a snack. This is for, like, the high-end stuff. You come here for the gourmet stuff. Even though I feel like, I don't know, it feels like they should have a spot for random pirate ships that come aboard. This cook can cook. Look at that. I don't know what that is, but that looks good. It's elephant tuna, seared asparagus, and a sweet soy reduction. <laughs> well, I'll call it crap. I like how yeah. Zeph is essentially oh, Gordon Ramsay. He's That's just like, sure. what is this? This is raw. This is trash. You gotta try table outside. Oh, Sanji got legs. He got, he got two of them more specifically. I like that we actually included Iron Fist. We didn't need to include him. I feel like he just played a really minor part in Baratier, but I like that he got that little moment where we just obliterated him. It shows that Sanji is actually uh, competent. One of everything, please. Any drinks, one of our signature cocktails. There's a lot of things that I didn't know whether they would work or not. Like the accent I was 50-50 on, but like the eyebrow I thought I would miss more. But honestly, if you made it there, I feel like we would barely be able to see it. Apologies, madam, I didn't see you there. Would you care for an aperitif to start? We have several rare McCure vintages in stock. Or perhaps you'd like a glass of umeshu. Oh, and he's such a simp. This works though. This is not like the creepy simp. <laughs> but even Nobby's like, what are you doing? You're weird. Oh, Bogart time! So, the 77th Green Branch is running training exercises nearby? We don't need the helm. If we delay, we might lose track of Luffy entirely. No SOS calls. So instead of just getting random marines, you're gonna call in Mihawk? This is like a nuclear option, man! You're sending a warlord after him? <laughs> like, look at what he's doing! You're gonna- you're gonna send that guy? Garp is really trying to kill him! He's trying to kill him! You didn't think to mention that your grandfather was a Marine, and not just any Marine, a Vice Admiral. This is pretty valid. She's addressing, like, some concerns that, like, why why would you talk about this? And in return, again, Luffy deflects. Oh, what did he write down, buddy? What is he planning? Thank you. No, sir. Thank you. Who the hell is Monkey D. Luffy? Oh, you messed up. <laughs> Zeph is not feeling it. Bust. The meal has already been paid for. I just haven't given you the money yet. Man, that logic is cute, but that is not gonna cut it. This strategy did not work out for him. For starters, you gotta remember something. The meal you had with your friends, that's one year's worth of dishes. One year? How much did this boy eat? He ate the entire kitchen. Let me get your second best bottle of rum. Anything else? Yeah. If I wanted to secure passage to the Konomi Islands, who would I talk to? Ooh, we're setting up stuff for Arlong. Like, oh, she's scheming. Years ago, there were these seven incredibly powerful pirates. Man, the more this goes on, the more I'm realizing how much it was such a good idea that Helmopo and Kobe got this side part. Because, like, Helmopo would know about that. He's a part of the Navy. He knows the ins and outs. His dad was the captain or whatever. I don't remember. His dad was, like, what, Axe Hammer Morgan or something? <laughs> I should be running this place, but the old man's so stubborn it'll never happen. 
Well, that's your dream. Be head chef of the Baratier. I feel like Luffy in this regard is trying to reach out more, trying to understand people's core philosophies, where I feel like in the original, he kind of just has a more intuitive understanding. But here he's like, what do you want? What is your dream? And we're going to need a great cook if we're going to find the One Piece. Oh, and they added him there too. It's very structurally different. Krieg is, well, Krieg is maybe dead. But yeah, now we're just learning about the horrors of the Grand Line through Jin. Ooh. He got the moves. This is also something that I feel like we didn't really cover in the Baratie. It feels like here is where we're really starting to develop Zoro and Nami's dynamic. It feels like we're actually starting to create this crew of actual people. Is it true you're sending Dracul Mihawk after Luffy? It seems there are different rules for different pirates. And the ocean is blue. No, I'm with Kobe on this one. This feels corrupt, man. This feels bust up. Slide. Fired at him. And again. Lore accurate. That's totally what he did. Yep. You're the captain. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, you messed up, buddy. You've been telling the wrong stories to the wrong crowd. You're Dracul Mihawk. I, Rorono Azuro, challenge you to a duel. Oh, just like that. That's bold. We're fighting. Me, you, fighting Town Square right now. And I feel like this would be a really good place to put Zoro's flashback, right? Not in Sarah Village. What the hell did you just do? Luffy, we got a problem. <laughs> Luffy, you please, you gotta understand. Off. This man's gonna get himself killed. Oh, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. You're and since we got to see a little bit more of their dynamic and them actually bonding, I can actually believe that Nami cares about Zoro. You want me to say you're the best? You're the best, okay? It's pleading. It's desperate. It's her making one of the only few friends that she's made in her entire life. And that person is going to die. Okay, it is time. I really am curious how well this fight goes because it is, no matter how you try to phrase it, <laughs> it is stupid. Mihawk's performance is also really good. Like you would expect him to be cheesy, too like edgy or like trying to be way too cool and it ends up being dumb. But oh! <laughs> and the dramatic launch back. I think this fight works a lot better because he's not just blocking, but he's like dodging a lot. He's grabbing his sword. <laughs> That's it. That's where you quit. That's where you quit, buddy. That was well done. I thought that would be stupid, but that actually worked. So I'll do you the honor of killing you with Yoru. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, visceral too. <laughs> the thud. They had. Oh, that's intense. This is a really strong low point. Anyways, uh, he's dead. I mean, he's got a really big head. It's like freakishly big. <laughs> that line was so out of pocket. My friend is dying. <laughs> that's a pretty good way to say it. Oh, the chefs are doing surgery. That's pretty cool. Oh, and now he is cooking. I like the idea that he just made tuna and then leaves. He's like, yeah, I can't help you, but check out my cool dish. Anyways, goodbye. And what I want is to see what becomes of that young man when he enters the Grand Line. Ooh, I don't think we outright said this in the original, but I really love the concept of Mihawk backing up Luffy. I'll let him live to see what becomes of him. Zeph once told me that making decisions is what separates a captain. And it feels like Luffy's arc is about him becoming an actual full-fledged captain. Of him realizing and trying to be a good captain. How you two meet? Were you on his crew or something? Man, even in the strongest seas, it's like, well, guess we're cooking. I mean, what else could you do? I guess all you could do is just keep doing what you're doing, huh? You're never gonna serve fancy stuff like that. I will when I get to the old blue. And we're talking about the all blue more, we're hyping it up. We're showcasing what the rest of the world, outside of the dreamers, think about it. I know that every pirate has a gimmick in this world, but Zeph already had the red boots. That could have been his gimmick. He would have been really cool with that. But no, he had to be a chef. Like apparently he is such a chef that he always carries oregano on him. <laughs> such a truer line has never been said. Do what you want, but I'm not gonna die here. Not until I find the old blue. Again, we're referencing the all blue. We're saying that a lot this episode. What happened? Storm. 
but but the crew they're all dead except for us this is a horrifying image another scenery that i just thought wouldn't work in the live action it feels like we're really diving into how utterly horrible this experience was oh and the revelation moment you still have some food you gotta give me some there's no food how are you still alive most underrated casting has to go to Zeph and Young Sanji. You have any idea what that's like? Having someone lose a limb to save your life? Actually, I kind of do. <laughs> that's dumb. In a certain country in the northern seas, there was an explorer named Mont Blanc Noland. Noland? Oh, it's the story. No Look, you gotta understand, Skype is like my favorite arc, okay? Just let me have this one. Why did the king have to kill him? Sometimes, when you are in charge, you have to make the tough decisions. Ooh, hint, hint. Why didn't you stop him? You really feel Nami being so aggressive with Luffy. Like, yeah, Zoro could have died, but to Luffy, that is a risk that Zoro had to take. That is his dream that he is willing to die for. You can't stop that. He might die, Luffy. I'd do anything to save him, except stand in the way of his dream. We all have dreams, but we outgrow them that is really heartbreaking coming from nami man <laughs> and then we get arlong very cool very cool entrance arlong just make him a Ooh, super strong presence yeah dude he feels intimidating even zeph is like intimidated by him hey zoro what's up nailed it like, I love it. He's conflicted. He doesn't know what to really say in this situation. Those fishmen will tear this place apart if Zeph doesn't turn him over. You stay with the ship and protect the map. Bro, she looks pissed. She's not in the mood. Man, like, I get that Arlong's supposed to be intimidating, and he is intimidating. But he's not, like, original intimidating. I think that's just his, like, aesthetic. Arlong doesn't translate well to live action. Or at least not this version. The other fishmen translate pretty well, though. These fine fishy folk persuaded me to point him in the right direction. God, man, I love Buggy. <laughs> I've got eyes and ears everywhere. <laughs> Stereo! Like, a lot of his performance feels like he steals the show. Very in character. Oh, that is raw. Bullets don't work again. Oh, <laughs> The whole bullets don't work against me thing. Oh, it's Zeph. Yeah, you gotta step in there, man. You gotta do something about that. You saw how he went flying across the room? Okay. <laughs> that makes two of them. Yeah, no, I agree with something. Get out of there. Bullets didn't do anything to that guy. We're just gonna whack him. Oh, yeah, he's had enough of it. Oh, and you're getting whooped, buddy. He's actually losing this pretty... <laughs> pretty badly like he is getting constantly launched Arlong, wait. i have it <laughs> buddy got saved she is very clearly trying to help him out like though said, like that is a perfect time to intervene why waste your time right and right there she's trying to protect him by being like no nah, don't actually kill him just drown him <laughs> where's nami she's gone She's a member of Arlong's crew. But man, this is such a low point for all the characters. I don't need you to do that. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. They they should cancel. Like, whoops. Sorry, Baratier got destroyed. At least I'm not the one who goes on moaning about the old blue. You've been yammering on about that since you was a snotty-nosed little brat. Something feels weird about this to me. It's not that Zeph is wanting Sanji to chase his dreams. It's that Sanji chooses to go with a straw hat. It feels like we hardly got to see any of their interactions together, and half of which were Sanji seeing Luffy's bad leadership. Like in the original, at least he proved himself by being beating up Krieg, but in the adaptation, he loses. Like at best, he at least chose to fight Arlong, so Sanji knows that Luffy's not a complete coward, but then he gets obliterated. And in Luffy's defense, this marks the turning point for him. But is that enough for Sanji? I don't know. I'm curious what you think. And now I lost Nami. I lost the Grand Line map. I need you, Zoro. I need you to wake up.
I feel like this was a controversial decision. I personally really loved how this was handled. Luffy's entire arc in these two episodes were coming to grasp with the struggle of being a competent captain and him stating that I'm going to need you after hitting his low point after like everything that's happened in Baratier. It is like him understanding all of the things that he's going to need to get back on track and all of the help that he's going to need. You're my captain, Luffy. And I'm your first mate. Ooh, that's strong. It's happened. Hey, Sanji! You keep your feet dry. I owe you my life. Thank you for putting up with my shit all these years, old man. See, I do really like this scene. It's just like what's around it that I'm mixed about. I just wish we got to see more of why Sanji would want to join the crew. Anyways, thanks to all of my patrons for eating at my restaurant. Except instead of eating at a high quality restaurant, it's more like homestyled cooking. And instead of there being a delicious meal, it is instead uh, v videos. But you don't eat them.